handicaps, mentally challenged, mm -hmm. down to people and stuff like that, that would be able to work and be self-sufficient, they're restricted because they're only allowed to make X number of dollars a year and or they can't get disability. The ABLE Act would not allow them to make thirty or forty thousand dollars a year but still get Medicaid and mm -hmm. things like that. And it's been held up in Congress for years. I have a feeling that it will go away at the end of this year. I would like to see your support for that because okay. I, I'm the president of ARC Florida. Yeah, and, I was at ARC in 2008. Okay, and I mean, we have almost 40,000 adults in our state that would like to be independent and work on themselves. And, and but you know, they can't because they lose all their benefits. And, you know, and they don't want the benefits. You brought, you brought up a great point, and it comes right back to what I say. It's about setting conditions for the individual, all of America, all individuals. You know, one of the things I find, you know, deplorable, not just with that, but also with Vietnam veterans. Vietnam veterans, you know, if they have certain type of disabilities, they're, you know, they can't go out and work or get a job or anything like that because then they, they, they take it from their disability. But yet, coming back to this illegal immigration question, the lady who comes across here illegally and has a child can get up to $1,500 a month. Government, subsidized, whatever. $1,500 a month. For a child. So this these are the type of things that I mean we're seeing our country being turned upside down. And, and we've got to get back to promoting and taking care of our American citizens. And right behind you, man, we have questions. Oh I guess. What can I do to help you? <laughs> You know, the most important thing is, you know, when you go home, you know, go to our website. Send our website out to, to some friends. Send our YouTube videos out to some friends. Sign up and get on our Facebook, get our uh, email blast, things of that nature. So, I mean, how many people in here have a cell phone? Okay. How many people in here have a computer? How many people in here have a Blackberry? Guess what you just qualified at? Your media source. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, we're laughing. But so many people sit around and think, well, you know, the Palm Beach Post and Sunset, that's a bunch of crap. You all are a media source, and you can get a message out. You can get a word out. You can come out and volunteer, help us with some walks. You know, we've got yard signs, we've got yard signs out, get bumper stickers. The more people see the name, people start scratching their head, well, who is this guy? With? Okay? You can pull down our TV commercial ads. And you can attach that to an email, you can blast those out. Just 30 second ads. So those are the types of things by which on campus here you can leverage the new social media. So you don't have to be dependent upon the folks that are on these folks the sunset. Help us to get the message out. That's the most important thing. And last question, because I know it's getting late. Do you support uh, similar legislation for the Arizona just passed? Well, absolutely. I mean that's <laughs> They make 10, 12, 15 million new citizens. That number goes to maybe 50%. Okay, that's what this is all about. So, you know, there was an interesting conversation I had. How many people here live in Jupiter, know no, Jupiter, Florida? The El Sol Day Labor Center up there in Jupiter, taxpayer funded. I was at a panel discussion with the uh, director of that center, and I asked her one simple question. I said, if a veteran comes in, and ask to uh, get job placement. Does a veteran take priority over the legal immigrant that's in your facility? She said, absolutely not. That's what the problem in our country is. We don't understand that a constitutional republic is based upon the rule of law and the respect of the individual rights of freedoms. If we don't respect the rule of law, if we don't protect our borders, ladies and gentlemen, study what happened to Rome. When Rome stopped producing, when Rome did not protect its northern border, when Rome devalued its currency, when the corruption in the Senate became so bad, 